Chapter 6. Welcome to Oridon Prep, home of the Oridon Fighting Knights. How cute. Yeah, so I think I'm officially going to be sick. The limo cruised through the sprawling green campus and came to a stop. An impressive building with a flower garden loomed before them. A group of curious students in blue and gold uniforms waited outside the limo, waving welcome flags. A marching band started to play with great gusto. The driver opened the limo door and Mal, Evie, Jay, and Carlos tumbled out. They were about as indignified as it got. Jay was yanking at a scarf that Carlos was clutching. You got everything else. Why do you want this? Carlos asked. Because you want it, said Jay, wrestling Carlos to the ground and pinning him there with his foot. In their squabble, they didn't notice the group of students watching them. The students backed away at the sight of them fighting, and the band dribbled to a wheezing stop. A smiling woman stepped through a clump of students with her arms outstretched as if she were about to hug someone. She had brown hair pulled back into a blue spun, pearl earrings, and a lavender dress with a pink bow at the neck. Mal noticed the, go the woman and alerted her friends. Guys, guys, guys! Mal said from the side of her mouth, We have an audience! Then she put on a fake smile and st struck a fetching pose. Evie quickly followed suit, resting her hands on her hips. Jay smiled and told his audience, Just cleaning up, he helped Carlos to his feet. The woman addressed Jay, Leave it like you found it, she grinned. And by that, I mean just leave it. She gave Jay a pointed look. Jay t tossed all his loot back into the limo. The woman smiled and nodded. Then Jay noticed a pretty student with caramel-colored skin, skin and chocolate brown hair. She wore a blue sweater, a pink dress, and a gleaming gold necklace. She he sauntered up to her with a smile and said, Hello, Foxy. The name's Jay. The girl laughed, then stopped. The woman leaned in between Jay and the student. Welcome to Oridon Prep, she said. Jay's smile faded. I'm Fairy Godmother, headmistress, she bowed elegantly. The Fairy Godmother? asked Mal. Fairy Godmother nodded. As in, bibbidi bobbidi boo asked Mal, pretending to wave a wand. bibbidi bobbidi you know it, said Fairy Godmother. Mal gave her a forced good girl smile. Yeah, I always wondered what it felt like for Cinderella when you just appeared out of nowhere with that sparkly wand and warm smile. And that sparkly wand, she flashed a big cheesy smile. Carlos licked chocolate off his fingers as Mal spoke. That was a long time ago, said Fairy Godmother. And as I always say, don't focus on the past or you'll miss your future. the future, she smiled. Wherever the, you wind up. It's so good to finally meet you all, said a handsome young man as he stepped forward and clasped his hands. He wore a navy suit jacket that sported the Ordon Prep crest, a hanky in the breast pocket, and a basso play tie. Play tie. I'm Ben. Prince Benjamin, said the girl beside him. Soon to be king, she squealed. You had me at Prince, Evie said as she stepped forward and stared into Ben's eyes. My mom's a queen, which makes me a princess, she started to bow. The evil queen has no royal status here, and the girl, and neither do you. Ben gave the girl a look that said, cool it. This is Audrey, he said. Princess Audrey, said Audrey, taking Ben's hand. His girlfriend, right, Benny Boo? She flashed a smile at Ben and tucked her chin. Ben let out a short laugh. Ben and Audrey are going to show you all around, Fairy Godmother told Mal and her friends, and I'll see you all tomorrow. The doors of wisdom are never shut, but the library hours are from 8 to 11, and as you may have heard, I have a little thing about curfews, she smiled, turning away from Mal and her friends and walked toward a building with the marching band following in her footsteps. Ben smiled and approached Mal and her friends. It is so, so, so good to finally meet you all, Jay punched him playfully. Ben shook hands with Mal, Carlos, and Evie, looking into Mal's eyes with great searing intensity. This is a momentous occasion, he said, 
and one I hope will go down in history as the day our two peoples began to heal. Evie had his hand for too long. Audrey pulled Ben away. Mal, imitating Ben's tone, said, Or the day that you showed four peoples where the bathrooms are. Mal's friends laughed. Ben grinned. A little bit over the top? A little more than a little bit, said Mal. Well, so much for my first impression, said Ben. He laughed. Mal laughed too. She stared at him for a moment before looking away. Audrey glared at her through a smile. Hey, you're Maleficent's daughter, aren't you? Then she said in a disingenuous voice, I totally don't blame you for your mother trying to kill my parents and stuff. Oh, my mom's Aurora, Sleeping Beauty. Yeah, I've heard the name, said Mal, cutting her off. You know, I totally don't blame your grandparents for inviting everyone in the world except for my mother to their stupid christening. Audrey blasted a fake smile. Water under the bridge. Totes, said Mal, putting on an even bigger fake smile. Both girls fake laughed and let the laughter fizzle out in unison. Ben clapped his hands together. Okay, so how about a tour? He said happily. He headed toward the garden, sharing facts about the school and its history. The teens looked up into the face of a fearsome statue that resembled Ben's father in beast form. Ben clapped and it came to life and growled. Carlos squealed and jumped into Jay's arms. Ben, noticing Carlos's fear, gave a quick double clap. The statue magically transformed into the beast as a young prince. Carlos relaxed a little. Carlos, it's okay. My father wanted his statue to morph from beast to man to remind us that anything is possible, said Ben. Does he shed much? asked Mal. Yeah, Mom won't let him on the couch, said Ben with a serious expression. Mal and he exchanged looks. Mal gave a wry smile and he smiled back. Ben continued his tour. Jay put Carlos down. Carlos clapped to get the statue to come alive again. Nothing happened. He raced ahead to catch up with the group. Inside the building, there was a fireplace, dark wood staircases, chandeliers, and stained glass windows that made the place feel warm and sunny. So you guys have a lot of magic here in Ordon? Mal asked, like wands and things like that. Yeah, it exists, of course, but it's pretty much retired, said Ben. Most of us here are just ordinary mortals who happen to be kings and queens, added Mal. That's true, said Audrey snootily, draping Ben's arm over her shoulder. Our royal blood goes back hundreds of years. She looked at Ben possessively. Ben took his arm off her. Doug, he said, when he noticed a nerdy boy with thick glasses heading down the stairs. The boy was wearing a blue and gold marching band uniform and carried a clipboard. Doug, Doug, come down. Ben clapped a hand on Doug's shoulder. This is Doug, he announced. He's going to help you with your class schedules and show you the rest of the dorms. He looked right at Mal. I'll see you later, okay? And if you need anything at all, feel free to ask Doug, blurted out Audrey. She faked laughed and dragged Ben away. Hi, guys, said D Doug. I'm Dopey Son, as in he started counting on his fingers. Dopey, Doc, Bash, Happle, Grumpy, Sleepy, and Evie caught Doug's eye. Hi, ho, he said to her, completely charmed. Evie went to nose to nose with him. Evie, evil queen's daughter. She started to twirl her hair flirtatiously. So, about your classes, said Doug. I put in the requirements already. History of woodsmen and pirates, safety rules for the internet, and he cleared his throat. <clears> throat> Remedial goodness 101. Let me guess, said Mal. She popped a piece of candy into her mouth. New class? Doug nodded sheepishly. Come on, guys, Mal said, dropping the wrapper on the floor. Let's go find our dorms. She started up a flight of stairs. Carlos, Jay, and Evie followed her. Oh, uh, yeah, your dorms are that way, guys, said Doug, pointing in the opposite direction. As Mal and her friends came back down the stairs and headed in the direction he indicated, Doug hung back, counting through the dwarves again. Dopey, Doc. Bashful, happy, grumpy, sleepy, and sneezy, said Carlos, passing him and ascending the opposite direction staircase. Doug sighed and looked at the ceiling. Upstairs, Mal and Evie opened the door to their dorm room. 
It was light and airy and dappled in sunlight. The white canopy beds were covered with pink pillows, and flowery curtains fluttered gently in the fresh breeze from the open windows. Evie's eyes widened with delight as mouths narrowed in horror. Wow, said Evie. This place is so amazing. Gross, said Mal. I know, right? said Evie, changing her tone. Tune. Amazingly gross. Ew. When Mal wasn't looking, Evie couldn't help giving a silent gasp of joy at her new crib. I am going to need some serious sunscreen, said Mal, arms crossed. Yeah, said Evie. E, said Mal, pointing to the windows. She closed the curtains as Evie moved to other windows in the room and did the same, plunging the dorm into darkness. Woo, said Mal. That is much better.